Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here. In this video I'm going to cover some basic maintenance processes that I and many others perform on their printers. I will be demonstrating these maintenance procedures on a couple of printers basically because I've had many questions asked about how to perform these types of preventive maintenance steps. In front of me I have an Epson R2000 and then after I get done with this one, demonstrating on this one, I will crank up the Epson Pro 3800. And what I do on that one will apply equally as well to the Epson Pro 3880, as they are basically identical inside. The only difference is that one uses Vivid Magenta inks. This is the internal compartment of the R2000. Here is your print head. I'm going to go ahead and turn the power off by pressing the front button, power button, and then I'm going to press it back on and as the head begins to move I'm going to pull the power cable from the back and that will allow me to position the head manually anywhere I want it to be. At this point the head is basically locked. So let's go ahead and turn off the power. Now the power is back on. Once the head begins to move, there, I have pulled the cable off, and now I have a head that is freely movable by hand. One of the most often occurring problems, of course, is head clogs. When you run a nozzle check, you see that the nozzle check is not 100% complete and some of the nozzle lines are missing. This could be caused by various uh, possibilities. One, of course, is dried ink on the surface of the head itself. What could possibly cause that? Well, there are two schools of thought. Many people insist that you turn off the printer when not in use. In other words, if you're not going to use it for several days, turn it off. And that will cause the printer to seal itself on this capping station. And that is the outside portion of the where the purge sponges reside. See the outline. Rectangular in nature. And that will seal the head and prevent it from drying. Other people, on the other hand, leave their printer on. I have left my printer on pretty much constantly without any problems whatsoever. If I do have a clog, depending on the norm number of lines or the percentage or ratio, say for instance if a if magenta is not printing fully and I detect that it's only about you know 10 percent of the lines, I will go ahead and print a magenta sheet. In other words, I'll go to Photoshop, prepare a document, fill it with pure magenta, send it to the printer and telling the printer driver to not control color and I will then use for instance either glossy or luster as my paper choice and the highest uh, level of quality. That will make all of the nozzles fire and it has a tendency to also make sure that magenta is, is being used the most. Now there's no way to really isolate only the magenta ink from flowing as you would need a uh, RIP software in order to be able to do that. Uh, there may be a combination of some other colors creating a composite magenta, but most of the uh, printing will be done by the magenta uh, nozzles. And that has a tendency to clear it. If it does not, then I will run a, clean, a cleaning cycle and that usually takes care of it. Now, of course, I have an external ink bottle to catch all of my waste ink generated. I also have a utility to reset my ink counter back to zero. So there's no problem with me dumping ink into the waste pads. That's uh, long been taken care of since the printer was new. Another way of clearing up a persistent clog, one that maybe does not react positively to a cleaning cycle, is to take some regular Windex. This is the ammonia-based blue Windex that you buy at any American supermarket. Load it up into a syringe and apply a few cc to the sponges. 
Make sure you do not overflow it. And then move the head directly on top of it. You will let that sit for a few hours, then turn the printer back on, run a cleaning cycle again, and hopefully that will then clear up any persistent dried or stubborn dried ink that may have been on the uh, surface, the underside of the print head itself. You can also lay a folded paper towel. You can fold it lengthwise in maybe thirds and lay it directly on the plate and wet it with uh, Windex and then run the print head right over it. And let it sit there for a few, few minutes and then rock it back and forth and this will wipe the bottom. And since Windex has ammonia, it tends to dissolve dried ink quite effectively. In fact, I would recommend that most people just give up on buying um, commercial um, cleaning products for printers. Okay, so once you have soaked your purge pad, you can simply blot it off. As I'm doing so here, you see the ink that is being absorbed back into the paper towel. Now, sometimes a very serious problem will develop, and this is possibly can happen if you do not use your printer for a very, very long time. The perch pump lies directly underneath this unit here, and that's the one that operates the vacuum that is necessary in order to draw ink out of the through the head and basically clean it. It is also activated when you first initialize your printer, when you freshly install a set of cartridges. The tubing that is directly connected from the purge unit to the waste pads that are located at the base of the printer chassis can basically get clogged up and it will not allow fluid to pass. This will effectively cause a flood of ink. The pump, since it's above the tubing, will continue sucking ink out of the uh, head and it has nowhere to go and it will just spill all over the place and, and give you a um, huge headache. So one way to solve that if you have an external waste ink bottle is to disconnect the bottle, attach a syringe to the tubing without the needle, just from the tip. Insert the tip full of Windex add some Windex on top and then back and forth try to pump Windex into the unit itself and this I have done pretty successfully on a 1900 on an R1900 which had a horrible clog on it when I first bought it used so it took me several hours but once I got it fully clean these pads basically became almost white so that's another thing you could do so basically we're going to put some fluid here, some Windex. We're going to wipe the surface of the, the part that seals around the head. It's made out of rubber, so you want to make sure that it is clean and well taken care of. You do not want to nick it. You do not want to mar it. You do not want to damage it, damage it in any form because this is what creates a perfect seal when you park the head after you turn the power off. If you do not have a seal, then the head will dry anyway. And you will get a clog after maybe a week or so. Okay, now, to reiterate, add some fluid. Let it sit for a while. Bring the head over it if you need to. If you're having um, some head clogs. If you do not, just add fluid. Let it sit for a while and then blot it. Repeat this several times until the area is completely free of excess ink or any kind of gunk. Remember ink dries and becomes becomes very gooey. Okay here's a little secret that a lot of people don't know and that is the fact that there is a wiper blade which every so many printing passes it flips up and acts as a squeegee cleaning off excess ink on the underside of the printhead or the business end of the printhead keeping it clean. If this was not done ink would literally build up on the printhead 
and you would end up after a couple of prints getting a lot of black smudges on your prints or droplets of ink. A lot of people complain about that. They have no idea where it's coming from. Of course, if it's a physical um, problem, it's because maybe the paper is curled and the head literally strikes it. The head is separated by a very small amount of airspace and the droplets are shot out through that airspace and then deposit on top of the paper. So if your paper is slightly curled, it will then physically touch the head and cause a uh, big smudge on it. This usually occurs around the corners, maybe the leading edge or the trailing edge of the paper. So make sure that the paper is flat when you feed it through, especially thicker fine arts type papers. All right, so I'm gonna show you where the wiper blade is located. It's a little awkward because I'm working from behind the printer here. I'm going to use a pair of long forceps. If you take a look at where I'm pointing here, it's directly located. If you're looking at from the front to the left side of the purge unit, okay. And I'm going to go ahead and just grab this little piece of plastic here and just pull it out like so. Be very careful. Don't force anything. There you go and now it's, it's parked on the top position. Visually, I don't think you can see it. You see how flexible it is. Visually, I don't think you can see it, but there's some uh, ink residue on top. Now you can use Q-tips or you can use a paper towel if you wish. I'll go ahead and use a paper towel for this demonstration. So I'm just gonna soak my paper towel with some Windex and just run it along the edge. And you can see that I have picked up some black ink and then the area that I notice has some uh, buildup is here at the bottom of it and I'm gonna hit that look at that see and you just continue doing this like I said a q-tip is a little bit more convenient to use so you can use either especially if you have a lot of buildup and just continue wetting your paper towel and wiping it. Use a clean edge every time. This is very important. This will this will prevent most um, problems with uh, black smudges and prints. The last thing we want to do is to uh, run a sheet of uh, expensive, you know, seven dollar paper and have it be smudged. I don't know about you, but I hate throwing seven dollars away. And as you can see, the more I continue to do so, the more black ink I pick up. And I'm gonna now do the edges of the parking pad or the capping station as it is called. Again, I could add, I can do this for maybe 20 minutes until I get it all out. It'll be nice and clean. It will not have any um, color whatsoever on it. So these are the points right here where you would clean and then once you have that clean let's assume that it is now clean I'm gonna reposition it back down I'm just gonna pick it up just it swivels so it's a matter of just popping it back down those two things I just did there will prevent most of the smudges that people experience another area that requires maintenance is this sponge that runs along the platen. Now what is the function of this sponge? Well, if you print a lot of borderless prints, in order for the printer to be able to print beyond the edges so that there aren't, you don't end up with a little sliver of a border, because positioning of the paper is not really that accurate, you can't really uh, guarantee a hundred percent perfect alignment of the paper so say for instance you're running a 4 by 6 borderless and you send to it a 4 by 6 file the printer driver will enlarge that file beyond the edges you will lose maybe 5 to 10 percent of the actual file because the printer has to print beyond the edges so it creates what is called an overspray and that overspray is deposited on the surface of the sponge. So 
that accounts also as waste. You could dribble Windex and blot it occasionally. I never print borderless, so I never get any overspray in these areas. However, on the far left, some printers have a sponge, and the sponge acts as a, as a wiper as well. So the printer will just make, say, six passes, and then on the seventh or eighth pass, it will go all the way to the left side. And the surface of the printhead will actually wipe itself from this area here. And I will demonstrate by depositing some Windex here, blotting it, and it's clean. I will do the same on this other side, and I'll blot it, and you can see that there is ink there. So the idea is to, sometimes when you um, experience or begin to experience some droplets of ink on your non-printed areas, for example your borders, or you see ink droplets on top of the actual printed surface, this is an area that you have to clean. And basically, it's not that dirty, it's just this is a very light color gray at this point. You just continue to dribble Windex on it and dab it. Eventually, it'll become quite clean. I just simply continue to dribble Windex and blot it. Sometimes, if you ignore this for months on end, you will really get a mess built up there. That you do not want to do. Now, you don't have to get it 100% spanky, brand new, clean, as long as you don't have black, gunky ink coming out of it. You could get it to the point where it's drying off so that when you press down with a clean portion of the paper towel, you don't get a lot of black buildup on the paper towel itself. Remember, if that area becomes saturated with ink, then the head can no longer clean itself on it. As you can imagine, this has to be done quite often. And this is something that I'd say 98% of the printers out there, people who print, completely ignore. Or they don't even know that you should be doing this. Now, sometimes several models of printers do not have this type of uh, spongy area on the left. All right, so that's, see how it's getting a lot brighter there? It's becoming quite clean. And like I said, you could do this as much as you like. If you're really obsessive about it, you could bring this back to almost pure white. At this point, you could Make sure that there's no dust or fibers from paper inside. You can give it a nice little gentle uh, spray with some canned air. But anyway, make, make sure that nothing is loose, nothing has come apart. My printer interior is very clean. So basically at this point I'm done. I will not close the printer, turn it, power it back on, and uh, run a nozzle check. Make sure that I'm clean and good to go. Then after that, if I need to do so, I can also run a, a printhead alignment. And I just use the automatic alignment feature on the R2000. Then I'm ready to go. I'm ready to print. Let's go ahead and close it up. Plug the back up in the rear. The printer will make a very slow pass to the far left. Basically what I believe it is doing, it is just checking, make sure there's nothing obstructing the path of the printer. Imagine if it just shot to the left and it ran into an obstruction. That would not be good. Here we go. The 
is performing a cleaning cycle. Once the printhead moves out of, right now it's purging ink out of the printhead. Now it's going to suck it out right there. You can see. Notice that it's being sucked out of the uh, pads. You saw that it was basically a puddle of ink, and that noise that you hear is the purging pump sucking the ink out of the pad and depositing it inside my external ink bottle. Once this is done, I'll run a nozzle check. All right, so I don't want to bore you with all of this. I'll come back when it's all done and run the nozzle check and then have a look at it. And if it's okay, we'll go on to the next printer. Okay, you sent a nozzle check job to the printer. It finished doing all of its little gyrations and told me that it was ready to print. All right, and from where I can see, everything appears to be perfect. A little hint for the yellow, which is almost invisible. If you're a photographer and you have lots of uh, color filters, view it through a blue filter. That will make the yellow lines appear practically black. And that will allow you to really see them as clear as possible. And here's a close-up of the nozzle check. All the colors are there. Every line is firing. Every nozzle is firing. And the black is working perfectly. Okay, so that's it for this printer. Of course, you can also do many other little things. Um, clean the rollers. To do that is a very simple job. You take a simple sheet of paper, regular cheap printing paper, fold it in half lightly, not, not very hard. You don't want to create a huge crease. Now, wet the bottom half with just regular 70% isopropyl alcohol. Put this back in your sheet feeder and press the paper advance. And this will cause the wet portion to pass through. It will clean that pickup roller. Sheer by just the presence of the wet alcohol. And then the dry trailing edge will wipe it dry. Even though alcohol will evaporate quickly, what you want to do is pick up all of the debris and crap that builds up on the rollers with the wet portion. The, wipe, the dry portion will then proceed to dry it. And you can repeat this maybe three, four times. And you could do this once a month if you like. And basically that's it, other than keep it, keep the printer clean, as clean as possible, internally and externally. Um, there's nothing worse than dust inside of the printer. Remember, for those who print on fine art papers, those who print lots of um, borderless, a lot of the newer printers have to have the lid closed for them to print. So you create a, an atmosphere of ink vapors, literally, as they are being sprayed on the outside edge, beyond the outside edges of the paper. You create all this mist in there that picks up little paper fibers and so on, and dust, ambient dust, and all of that gunk just deposits itself on all the internal surface, and, and worse, if it attacks your printhead or maybe your advanced rollers, or any other feeding mechanism. So it's very important to keep the inside clean. Other than that, to reiterate, make sure your perch pad is clean. Dribble some fluid after you have moved the head out of the way, like I showed you. Dribble some fluid on it, blot it dry. If you have a wiper blade, some printers do not. Lift it up, make sure it's clean. Go to the left side of the printer, perform the cleaning process that I showed you on that side as well. Make sure that if there's any ink leaks anywhere, you clean them up. Um, then after that, just perform general maintenance, just general housekeeping. Clean the inside, clean the outside, and you should be good to go. All right, let's move on to the Pro 3800. Now we need to move this printer, print head out of the way, obviously. So in order to do that, it's the same routine. We're going to turn the power off. Let that baby turn itself off. It's going to depressurize the cartridges. And now we're going to power back on. 
and as soon as the printer pressurizes the carts it will begin to move the head and we will go ahead and pull the power plug out and that point is when we pull the plug out you saw the head move out of the way we're going to move that to this point here and basically it's the same process I will point to where the purge unit is purge unit is located right here the same device it has a rubberized gasket rectangular in nature there is also a wiper blade located here and that you would pop up you would drop some cleaning fluid if you saw a desire to purchase some or you can just use Windex works just as well so drip some Windex there blot it make sure there's no ink anywhere in this area here meaning that your dampers possibly were leaking so we're gonna clean this as we did in the first example we're gonna pull the blade in position wipe it clean put it back and in this case this printer does not have the same um, wiping sponge on the far left side so there's really not much you have to do just take care of that area there and you're good to go this is the sponge that sits over the plate which collects all of your overspray if you do a lot of um, borderless printing which again as I said I never do and that's basically it if you keep this printer clean and perform just those two simple functions and again of course physically check all of these belts to make sure nothing is out of place nothing has broken itself or, or whatever you'll be good to go for many many years of great service now again like in the earlier example you want to clean your feed rollers now I suggest that you of course I only used a eight and a half wide sheet of paper you would want to use as large a sheet of paper as possible and they actually make cleaning sheets just specifically for this they're a little bit sticky and you run them through the the printer itself and it picks up lint and junk that collects on the uh, surface of the rollers this of course is a 17 inch wide printer so you would want to run um, a large sheet of uh, cheap matte paper you know you can wet it with alcohol half of it run it through and you know it's a it's a, a a couple of bucks worth of maintenance that you can perform once every two or three months that will save you from a big bill if you have to send the printer in to uh, have it serviced okay it's a bit difficult to see well into the insides of this printer because of the restriction it's difficult to light it but here is the perch pan and I'll just leave this on for a few more seconds for you to be able to see exactly where that uh, lies and that will give you a good idea this is where you would want to uh, deposit some Windex and then after a few seconds wipe it deposit some more wipe it and so on and so on until you get a nice clean um, surface on the uh, perch pad do the same with the wiper blade again this just pops right out it's located right here this is a rubber rubber diaphragm right here all right that's about it I'm gonna go ahead and run a a nozzle check to make sure everything is running perfectly and then we'll go ahead and call it quits and I hope this helped out a little bit this is not a comprehensive uh, service routine but it's something that if you do once say every two or three months it'll save you a lot of headaches because this will prevent you from having to um, deal with some very serious problems that could possibly crop up as your printer gets older well the pro printers at least have a nice LCD screen so do a lot of the uh, all-in-one type office printing scanner type units so we're gonna go ahead and uh, be able to run our nozzle check directly from the printer rather than do it through the driver in the computer.
So we'll just go ahead, open up the front. We're gonna hit the menu button. We're gonna hit the down arrow button and it will say test print. We're gonna hit the right button again and we have nozzle check. Hit it once again. We have the choice between manual and auto. We'll just run a manual one for now. And now the choice is to print. So we print by clicking on the center button and that will immediately send a print job to the uh, unit. And we have a perfect check. All right. So that's basically it. I'm going to go ahead and show you the ink compartment for those of you who may not be familiar with the 3800. In order to access the external ink cartridge compartment, we're going to press the top arrow button. Hold it for three seconds, and that will release the lock. And there we go. I have modified my refillable carts so that they can be refilled in place. These are special. These are sold by Inkjet Fly. They only utilize two of the original manufacturer cartridge chips as opposed to other makes that require every single chip to be replaced and basically the chips are placed underneath this master chip now this just uses mat and photo and that's what controls the rest of the cartridges now they always read as being full so you have to be very careful that you do not let them run empty. So monthly checks, put a little LED flashlight against the cartridge, you should be able to see internally how much ink you have left. When you need ink, pop the little plug off, inject the ink, pop it black on. Normally you would have to take the cartridge out, stand it on end, and inject the ink. This constant removal and reinserting of the cart it's my theory that is really not good for the exit port seal. That's the last thing I want to go bad on these cartridges. Um, even the OEM carts are were never intended to be removed numerous times in and out. They're intended to be used once and disposed of when they're empty. But not so with refillables. And they don't necessarily make the exit port seal uh, a higher quality than, say, OEM they will wear out. So if I can diminish the number of times I have to remove my carts, then I can ensure that my seals will stay good for a very, very long time. All right, so let's go ahead and close this. That will reset the chips again. Basically, they stay on all the time. Another thing, the maintenance cart, when you buy the cartridge kit from Inkjet Fly, they provide you with a always empty chip for the maintenance cart. That means that your maintenance cart will always read as being fully empty, even though it is not. So again, you have to keep track of that. You have to remove it every once in a while, take a look at it. And I have uh, been able to pop the top of the unit off, remove the gunky internal absorbent material and just fill it with paper toweling. You can use whatever, anything, diaper material, cotton, whatever you want to use as absorbent. Um, a good choice is some of the automotive um, oil absorbing pads that they use in garages. If you can cut those and insert them vertically so that you have a nice layer of them inside your cartridge itself. Let me go ahead and uh, Turn off the power, and I'm going to show you what the maintenance cart looks like. A 
And you can see this is the waste ink I have generated. You can see that the rest of it is quite clean. So every once in a while I want to take a look at it to make sure that you know everything is fine. Even though this will this chip reads as if it's always empty, as if this thing is new constantly. So you do want to check it. You can remove the internal sponges by opening these tabs, take the top off, remove the gunky material. It's really not worth cleaning it. It will never go back to that com nice compressed uh, original shape. So remove the top, wipe the inside, wipe the top itself, and just pack it with some paper towels or some of that um, garage oil absorbing type um, pads that they use on garage floors. All right, that's basically it. I hope this was of some help to you all. And until the next time, Joe Rodriguez saying bye-bye.